What's up guys, Justin here with the RealtimeEssentials.com back with another Unity Asset tutorial for you. So I thought in today's video we could get a little more in-depth on how to create custom themes inside of Dungeon Architect so you can create your own custom dungeons. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so Dungeon Architect is a tool that you can get on the Unity Asset Store that basically helps you create your own custom dungeons inside of Unity. So what it does is you give it a bunch of parts and pieces and then it can generate different layouts. Well, I thought in this video we could talk through how to create those custom themes in here um, that lets you set what the different parts and pieces are. One thing to note about this, Dungeon Architect is currently 50% off as a part of the Unity Black Friday sale. So if you're interested in checking this out, you can do that at the realtimeessentials.com slash dungeon architect. So make sure inside of your package manager that you've downloaded and imported Dungeon Architect for this to work. And so basically what we want to do is we want to create a grid system that pulls from a custom theme file that we're going to create. And so it's really easy to do. So the first thing you need to do is remember inside of Dungeon Architect, there's a number of different prefabs in here. And we just want to find the one for Dungeon Grid. So not Dungeon Grid Flow, but just Dungeon Grid. And so we're just going to drag that up into our hierarchy right here. So that gives us our object right here. Notice how nothing's happened. So if I click on the build dungeon button, for example, notice how it says you need to assign a dungeon theme before you do that. So what we want to do is we want to create a new theme. So you just want to right click and then under create, you want to find the option for dungeon architect and click on the option for dungeon theme. And so when you do that, that's going to create a theme right here. And so first thing we want to do is we just want to label this. So I'm just going to call this YouTube dungeon right here. And so now what we've done is we've created a theme file that if we double click, we're going to get a window that looks like this. So more on this in a second. But um, what we want to do first is we want to go back into our dungeon grid and we want to assign that theme to the themes option right here. So all you have to do to do that is just drag that over and place it right here. And so now what we need to do is we need to start adding some prefabs to our theme right here. And so there's a number of prefabs built in, which is perfect for learning how to use this. So you can access those by going into the dungeon architect and we want to go to the demo theme candy option. And we want to go into the prefabs folder. Well, notice how in the prefabs folder, there's a number of different prefabs in here that um, we can use in order to build our level. So the first thing we want to do is we want to add some ground because we want this to generate some ground tiles in here. So we're just going to drag the ground prefab into our theme. Notice how when you drag a prefab into your theme, you're going to get a little window right here that previews it for you. And then what we can do is notice how if we mouse over these, they turn orange. Well, we want to click and drag from the ground function to this little button right here. Well, notice how when we do that, what this does is this actually generates ground in here using this uh, using this tile right here. And notice how if you have the button for real time update selected, this is going to update this in real time, meaning any changes you make are going to show up in your actual level itself. So what we need to do um, in this case is we just need to build our parts and pieces, right? So all of these different parts and pieces are going to come together in order to create your own game. And so one thing to note about this is when you're doing this, um, this is placing all of these on a grid. It's generating a grid and then placing the objects based on that grid. Well, there's an option right here for visualize markers. What the visualize markers is going to do is that's going to show you in 3D the actual grid that it's creating and where your objects are being placed. And so if you're ever creating your own custom stuff, which we'll talk about a little bit later in a different video, but if you're ever going to create anything custom, notice how that if you were to jump into your dungeon grid right here, there's an option in here for your grid cell size. So basically what that does is that allows you to set the size of the grid that's in here. And then if you're creating your own custom ground, you would just want to make sure that the grid you create is the same size as your grid cell size. Um, there's some other things that it does having to do with like the object pivot point, which we're not going to worry too much about for right now. We can talk about that in a future video if you guys are interested. But We've got this in here, and one thing that I talked about in my first video is notice how it's just kind of throwing these objects in here. 
it's just kind of like throwing the random objects into your scene. Well, what we want to do is let's go ahead and let's destroy this dungeon, which you can do by clicking in the dungeon grid and clicking on destroy dungeon. And let's create an object or an empty that we're going to put those inside. So we're just going to right click in here. We're just going to create an empty and we're just going to call this dungeon items. And then within the dungeon grid object, there's an option here for item parent. And all you want to do is just drag dungeon items into item parent. Now, if we click on build dungeon, it's going to build that inside of this dungeon items section. So you can just minimize those. And so what we want to do is let's start adding different objects to our scene. So for example, right now we want to add some walls, right? Because it's not very interesting right now. So let's drag the item in here for wall one. So we're going to drag wall one right here and then click and drag this. Notice how when you click on the walls, by the way, it shows you where those walls are going to be created. So you can preview those walls using the visualize markers. And then if I turn visualize markers off, notice what this is doing is this is creating walls inside of our scene. So now we have different wall sections in here. Notice how it's leaving gaps in here though, where the doors would be. And so that's because you need to put an object specifically with a door opening in it. And you need to associate that with the door object. So we're just going to drag this over from door. We'll just drag this in right here. And so notice how what it's doing is it's placing that door object in the openings that were left. So now you have a level where you'd actually be able to like move through the different rooms because there's openings linking them to other rooms. And so at the moment though, if this was your level, um, it would be really easy to fall off of the sides. And so what we want to do is we want to bring in an object um, for the perimeter called fence. And so if we click on fence, notice how that's going to show you that this would basically generate the fence objects all the way around the perimeter um, in order to keep people in, except for at areas where you have like an elevation change. So what we're going to do is we're just going to um, drag this fence object in here like this and then drag this across. Well, what that's going to do is that's going to generate your fence at the perimeter right here. So now you have a fence that's going to keep people in. And so we'll talk about um, adding multiple objects to an item type in a second. But first, let's go ahead and let's add our stairs in. There's no way to get from the lower levels to the upper levels. But all you have to do is just drag a stair object in here and just drag this across like this. And so notice how with the stair objects, these are getting placed in here facing the wrong direction. So they're in the right position, right? They're on the grid and you can see how it's showing you right here that they need to be going from here to here, but they're facing the wrong direction. So what we can do to change that, we can click on our stair object right here. And all we want to do is we just want to change the rotation 180 degrees. And I can't remember, it's not this one. So we're just going to shift this 180 degrees like this. So notice how now, this is facing the right direction, but its position is wrong. So we need to adjust the position to something like negative 1.5 or something like that. So you can see how if I set this to negative two, this is going to align better with this location. So it's still off the ground a little bit, but I think we're gonna call it good enough for right now. So notice how you can select the object inside of your theme and then adjust things like the relative position and location where these items are going to be placed um, by adjusting the position and the rotation objects. And so there's another kind of object that I want to take a look at and that's the wall separator. And so what the wall separator is going to do is that's going to basically place items inside of your walls. So for example, if I look at this wall right here, it's pretty plain. Well, notice how with my visualize markers on, this is basically going to take an item and it's going to put it inside of your wall or in that location in order to break the wall up a little bit. So usually what we would do in this situation is we would do like a pillar. So I'm just going to take pillar two and I'm just going to drag this in here like this. And so when I drag this in here and I place this, notice how it's going to place these pillars inside of the wall. But 
we're getting some flashing in here. The reason we're getting flashing is because these are exactly the same thickness as the wall, so you're getting what's known as Z-fighting in here. Your computer is trying to show two faces that are in the same location, and it doesn't know which one to show you. So what we would do to fix that is we're just going to make these pillars a little bit bigger. So let's select our pillar right here, and we're just going to set our scale to one and a half on the X and the Z axis like this. And so when you set this to one and a half, what that's going to do is that's going to scale the object up so that it's wider than your walls. But notice how it's using this in order to separate your walls in your scene. And so one thing we haven't talked about yet is right now this is basically placing this at every single location um, where a separator might go. But sometimes we want these to be a little more random. Right, they look a little uniform right now. So what we could do is for every object, there's a probability. So what the probability is, is that's going to randomize where objects are placed. So for example, let's say that I only wanted these to be placed in 50% of the locations in kind of a random location. Well, what we could do is we could set this probability to something like 0.5. And so if I set this to 0.5, notice how this is only placing those wall separators in some locations, but not in the other ones. So you can use this to kind of randomize where items are placed inside of your scenes. And so now, let's say that we wanted to use multiple different wall types in here. So let's say we randomly wanted this to place either a wall or a wall with a window. Well, what we could do is we can actually, and let's go ahead and move these up a little bit so they're kind of on their own. What we can do is we can actually add multiple items in here by dragging an additional item. So if I drag wall two in here and place this and then drag this over here, notice how now what it's doing is it's placing the walls with windows in every single location. That's because when Dungeon Architect adds items using the dungeon theme or the themes builder, it reads these from left to right. Well, we've got this first wall in here, and it's basically set where the probability of creating a wall is going to be 100% for this wall item. Well, if that's the case, then every wall is going to get placed as this wall with window, and it would never get to this wall right here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to change this probability to like 35%. So we'll go to 0.35. And then if we look at this, and I'm going to turn off the visualize markers, notice how at 35%, of the locations, we now have a wall with a window. So we can use this in order to create more random walls in here that are pro procedurally generated. So one thing to note about this, by the way, is within your dungeon grid, there's a box in here for the seed. And so what the seed is going to do is that's going to allow you to set the randomization. So every number that you put in here is going to generate a different level. So if I was to set my seed to one, and then click on the build dungeon button. Notice how everything's gonna be a completely different location than when it was in here as zero. So if I click on zero though, or enter zero, and then click on build dungeon, notice how I'm gonna get the same dungeon that I had before. And the power of this is because this is all modular, so this is all set up where all of these items um, go on a grid. Every time you do this, it's still gonna have all the stairs in here correctly, the fences, other things like that. And so from here though, let's say that we wanted to place some random pictures on the walls. So we've got our wall right here, right? And it's being generated. Well, there's an item in here for a photo frame. So if we drag the photo frame in here and we place that on here first, notice how we start running into an issue. And the reason we're running into an issue is because it's placing these photos, first off, they're in the wrong location, but it's placing these photos in here as a wall item. So it's treating them as the same as the other wall items. Well, what we want to do is we want to click on our picture frame right here. We want to uncheck the box for consume on attach. So when we uncheck the box for consume on attach, what that means is that means that's going to come in here and that's going to place our pictures in here, but it's not going to treat an item in a wall as if it's already been filled with a wall piece. So then all we have to do is just adjust the position of those photo frames. So I'm just going to bump these up maybe like three and maybe forward. So we're just gonna adjust our rotation and scale 
so that these pictures would sit on the walls like this. So maybe like negative point two is gonna be a good fit. And we'll bring this down. And so notice how this is placing these photo frames. And again, we wanna make sure that these are off the wall. But notice how what's happening now is it's placing all of these, but it's placing them inside of our window segments, which we don't want. And so the reason for that is because this is currently being generated from our walls, which isn't necessarily what we want, right? What we want is we want this to be generated from our wall segments that don't have a window opening in them. And so what we wanna do instead is we wanna create a custom object type that we can link to down here. So what we can do is we're just gonna add a marker node and we're just gonna call this picture frame. So this picture frame is basically the same as these other nodes that we have in here. But we wanted to find this specifically to be an object with the picture frame associated with it. So we're just gonna take the picture frame object, we're gonna drag an arrow down here. So this defines that we have a photo frame in here. Well then, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag an arrow off of the bottom here and then let up. We'll notice how when we do that, now there's an option in here for add marker emitter picture frame. So instead of us having to drag the picture in here and associate it with the wall, we can just use the marker emitter that we just created like this. So now if we look at this, this is going to place these picture frames inside of our scene. And notice how the location of them isn't right. So we're gonna go in and adjust those real quick again. So we're just gonna go to our picture frame. We'll just adjust this up to three. And so notice how now our wall object is the one emitting those rather than our wall with window. And then we can adjust this so that our height is a little bit different. So something like this. But then we can also within our picture frame object set our probability, right? Because we don't want a picture frame on every single one of these walls. So what we can do is we can set our probability to something like 0.5 or something like that. So maybe even less, maybe like point three. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna randomly place picture frame objects um, based on a 33% probability inside of our scene. So we've got our picture frames in here now, and every time that we create a new grid, let's say we went to three and clicked on build dungeon, this is still going to place our walls, our windows, and our picture frames. And so from there, you can add objects for whatever you want, right? So your wall, for example, you could also set these so that they generated flower pots. So you could get it to randomly generate flower pots, you could randomly generate shelves, lots of different things inside of your scenes. So leave a comment below, let me know what else you'd be interested to learn with Dungeon Architect. This works great with modular asset packs, so we might be able to look at something like that. Love having that conversation with you guys. I will also link to Dungeon Architect down down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.